Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph this equation, which I have 7x plus 3y is equal to 12. And I'm going to show you how to graph this um, by using our slope-intercept form. So when we have a, an equation that's in standard form and we want to convert it to slope-intercept form, we need to rewrite it so the y is isolated. Basically, here's standard form, ax plus by is equal to c. And what we want to do to write it in slope-intercept form is we want to write it as y equals mx plus b, meaning the y is by itself. All right, so to do that, I just need to, I'm going to circle my y and just undo everything that is happening now to my y. So we always want to follow our reverse order of operations, meaning here's my y. My y is being multiplied by 3, and it's being added by 7x. So to undo these operations, I always want to undo whatever I'm adding or subtracting to first. So I'm going to subtract a 7x on both sides. Then I'll write 3y equals negative 7x plus 12. Notice that's a positive 12. That's why it's a positive. That's why I'm writing positive. And I'm writing the negative sign x in front instead of writing 12 minus 7x, which would be the same thing. But because we always want to be our mx in front of our constant. Then I'll divide by 3. And remember when we're dividing, so now my variables will be multiplied by 3, so I divide by 3. And remember when we're dividing by 3, this 3 has to divide into both of these terms. Then I have y equals, so 3 divided by negative 7x is a negative 7 thirds x, and it doesn't really have where the negative sign is, plus 12 divided by 3 is 4. So now I have it in slope-intercept form. I can identify what is the slope, what is the y-intercept, and then graph. Remember, your m, your coefficient of your linear term, is going to be your slope, and b represents our y-intercept. So I'm going to write slope is equal to a negative 7 thirds. And remember that negative sign could be in the top or in the bottom. It doesn't matter which one it goes to. And then my y-intercept is going to be equal to 4. But remember, the y-intercept is a point where the slope represents a ratio of change between, your, between any of those two points. So when we're setting to graph this, the first thing we always want to do is graph the y-intercept, which in this case is at 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. All right. So then I go ahead and graph my y-intercept, which is at 4. Now I'm going to follow my slop, which I should call slope of negative 7 thirds. Now remember I said this is equivalent to negative 7 over 3. It's also equivalent to 7 over negative 3. It doesn't matter which one you want to do. Just remember the slope represents the change in the change between the y values and the over the change in the x values between any two points. Well, we have one point. So we can follow that change between the two points to go to our next point. So if I use the change as positive 7 over negative 3, positive 7 says the change in my y values is positive 7. So that means to go, I'm going to go positive 7 units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then the change in the y x values, I'm sorry, is negative 3. So I go up 7 and then to the left 3. That's what we call a slope triangle. So now I have my two points right, that I can connect to make a line. Now also, I could do negative 7 over 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then 1, 2, 3. And you can see that gives me another point that's on the line. But we only need to do this twice to be able to graph it. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph a equation in slope-intercept form when it is originally in standard form. Thanks.